At Stanislaus Nursing Home, we provide humane and compassionate care for people ages 60 and above in the last phases of an incurable disease so that they may live as fully and comfortable as possible. We focus on quality rather than the length of life. Here at Stanislaus Nursing Home, we treat the person rather than the disease, working to manage symptoms so that the person's last days may be spent with dignity and quality, surrounded by their loved ones. It's also family-centered. It includes the patient and the family in making decisions. Here we will show you a video that will give you more information upon hospice. Hi, my name is Don Schumacher and I'm president of the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization. We're here today to talk with you about hospice care. Now, some of you may have had experience with hospice care. Some of you may know or have had experience with palliative care. Palliative care is the provision of good, comprehensive pain and symptom management to patients who are facing serious or terminal illness. Today, we're going to be focusing on hospice care, which is the largest provider of palliative care in this country. About 1.5 million people receive hospice care over the course of about a year. Uh, during that time period, Americans such as yourselves probably have received the news that the illness that they were being treated for has not been moved towards a curative phase of their illness, but in fact has become uh, terminally ill. If yourself or your loved one has received this news from their physician and they've made a choice or a decision to move towards a more thoughtful, uh, palliative, supportive model rather than curative treatment. The focus is on care, not cure and the object of hospice care is to provide to that patient and the family enough support to allow the process of dying to take place in as comfortable a setting as possible. Care is also highly identified as being connected to the family as well. Because all patients, as they're going through the process of dying, do need to have the love, support, and care of their family members or loved ones. So for a hospice as a provider of services, the patient and the family are defined as the unit of care. So what I'm going to share with you are first definitions of hospice care, the types of hospice care and when to begin preparing for it, how hospice care is paid for, how you would go about choosing a hospice in your community, and how you might prepare yourself and your family for the entry into hospice programs. Because even though this is a sad and sometimes difficult issue, uh, it's very, very important that you have enough advanced knowledge and advanced warning, advanced preparation so that before you are uh, admitted to hospice services, you have enough information and know when to make that call. Before we begin, let me share a little bit with you about our organization. I'm speaking to you today from the National Center for Care at the End of Life here in Alexandria, Virginia. This building houses the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization, the National Hospice Foundation, FASHA, which is our work in Africa, and the Alliance for Care at the End of Life. These four organizations work in concert to bring awareness, education, public policy, and advocacy to consumers and providers of hospice services all around this country. And now let's get going and looking at what hospice care might mean to you should it come into your life.
Our facility consists of 80 private rooms with individual full bathrooms. The option of a roommate is also available. Rooms are equipped to hold any medical equipment, equipment that may be needed. We encourage our residents to bring belongings such as beddings and decor from previous residents so they feel the room is their own and that they are comfortable in their new place. Tour meetings with our experienced and professional team are offered. On holidays, we will have families visit and make our facility festive and fun. We will have gift exchanges so the families have a good time and are engaged. We will have frequent family nights so members feel welcome. Families can come whenever they please. We have all family members' con contact information in case of emergency matters. We will always keep families updated. We accommodate all families, even families who have busy schedules and travel a lot. We have upscale technology to allow our residents to communicate with their families. We have computers and project projectors that connect to Skype to make families far away still be in contact. Don't tell me this is a video. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hey. We have an activity coordinator at our site that puts together weekly activity plans. Some of the activities include bingo, poker, knitting, movie nights, plays, baking, instrument playing. New activities are added and scheduled changes are depending on our activity coordinator. Here's a sample of our weekly activity plan. In the song, Rule Britannia, what is Britannia told to rule? Uh, my name's Kim, and I'm the activities coordinator for Aldridge Court Nursing Home. We have some animals come in, they're called therapy pets. Um, and they're basically, they have to go through training to check that they wouldn't bite, wouldn't harm anyone. And the residents absolutely love them. The faces is unreal just for, you know, just to see a dog, really. And it's a bit like the donkeys. The donkey actually comes in and goes in the rooms. So the ones that don't see much very often, some of their faces are hysterical. So you're not expected a donkey, are you, to walk into the bedroom? Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's all good. I haven't got anything for you. We also have the Aldridge Church come in once a month um, on a Tuesday, and, and obviously the religious ones. That's nice because they have prayers and hymns and, and stuff like that. We have a film evening. Um, I did, we did Scottish Burns night last week, or the week before, I should say. I try and think of new ideas, like St. Patrick's Day, we've had a wine party, um, we've had Italian tasting, French tasting. I also do bingo, quizzes, and I also do one-to-ones that the ones that can't obviously come to the lounge, I'll go and have a chat with them and meet their individual needs, basically, what they want to do. And they have, always have choices in, in what they want to do themselves. Say they had dementia and they couldn't physically talk, you maybe read to them or hold the hand, put some music on. Um, the ones that maybe are disabled but have got mental, you, you read a newspaper with them, do a crossword with them, take them, take them out, go in the garden. It's, it's individual needs basically at the end of the day, so it's a job satisfaction for me. And as far as safety features go, our facility has call system, bathrooms, security equipped, handrails, shower seats. All of our medicines are safe and locked. We have safety programs such as fire drills, emergency and disaster plans, and some of our health services are stair glides, smoke detectors, and window safety locks. We also have well-trained staff that are certified. We have plenty of staff at overtime, 24-7 service. We also will evaluate our staff monthly by either patient or family members of patients. This will help us give better service. Doctors, nurses, counselors, therapists, and trained volunteers for you and your family. 
Together we give you and your loved ones complete palliative care. Hospice care staff members are kind and caring. They communicate well, are good listeners, and want to work with families who are coping with the life-threatening illness. They are usually specially trained in the unique issues surrounding death and dying and provided with ongoing education and support to help with the emotional demands of the job. Thank, Thank you, you for, for choosing Stanislaus Nursing Home Hospice Care. care.